looking at time signatures. Time signatures are very important. They help us identify how to perform the rhythm and how to count within the measures. Now, it doesn't tell us how many measures there are in music, okay? So I'm gonna let you know that right now because you might think it does, but it doesn't, okay? So looking at page five in your book, you'll notice that it says uh, the time signature. What is the definition of that? The top number tells us how many beats per measure there are, and the bottom number tells us what type of note gets one beat, or what type of breathe or semi breathe gets one beat, okay? Now, if you look at the examples it has there, we're gonna start with four, four time, a number four above and a number four below. That means there are four beats per measure, and then the four below says that the quarter note gets the beat. Now, if you know how quarter is spelled with numbers, right? If you take out the four and make it like a fraction, it makes a one fourth or a quarter. So the quarter note symbol gets one beat. Now there's also other time signatures that have the quarter note that also gets one beat. You can change the top number how many numbers you want, just no other fractions. You gotta think about that, only whole numbers. So you'll see that three, four time is also a time signature. How many beats per measure are in three, four time? Three beats per measure. How many measures are in a piece of music of three, four time? It doesn't matter, we don't know because the time signature does not tell us how many measures there are in music, okay? Now, the quarter note gets one beat for three, four time. We know that. Let's all take a look at 1.6 amazing. So amazing already gives us a time signature. What time signature does it show? It shows four, four time. You also notice the order that you have there. You have your clef first, then a little space, and then you have your time signature, okay? Now there's no bar line there. We just know that the music starts right after the time signature. So we don't need a bar line there. But you do have other bar lines to separate the rest of the measures. Now in four, four time, how many beats per measure do you have? Four, okay? Now in this particular case, how many measures are in this piece of music? There are four, it, that's just coincidental, all right? We also know that it's only four measures of music and I want you to remember this for the next lesson because you have a final bar line at the end of that first line of music, okay? So what pitch now are we playing? Let's go over that. Find your pitch and you'll notice that there's an A written in just the very first quarter note. Now, I'll give you a hint. All the notes are A. Now it's your open string A. Based on what instrument you're playing and what clef you're reading, your A is gonna be different than your friend that plays a different instrument, okay? For cello, your open A is gonna be on the fifth line. Now, this pitch, violin, viola, and cello, is A higher in pitch or lower in pitch than D? Your A is actually higher in pitch than your open D string. So your open A string is a fifth higher than your open D string. Before we start playing, let's go ahead and make sure we know how to play it rhythmically. Let's do the count first. Now we're in four, four time. We're gonna set my metronome back to 60 beats per minute. I'm gonna hit start. I'll give you a count off for one full measure, one, two, three, four. And then I want you just to count out loud the number of the beat, uh, the, the beat number on that note and remain silent on the rest. Let's begin. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, three. One, two, three. One, three. Very good. Let's try now to say the note name and make sure to be quiet on the rest. Ready? One, two, three, four. A, 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 A. And there you have it. Let's try playing it. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 